Hi folks, it's me Hannah. Hey! Okay, just now I came to a sudden realization that I may have turned into a little old lady. Yep, a little old lady. So what do you think? Do you think I have turned into a little old lady? Please let me know in the comment section below. I'd be curious to know. Yeah. So, how did I get here? More specifically, what kind of stories have I collected during my journey in getting here? More specifically, what kind of fun stories can I tell you from my journey in getting here? Transitioning can be lots of fun, especially during the closet dressing days. Yeah. And during the early transitioning days. Yep. So I made a list of eight short stories I could talk about in this video. Maybe some of you might be able to relate to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight of the short stories I'm talking about in this video. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> so the first short story is Operation Incognito. Yes. Operation Incognito. Why am I using the word operation? Well, back in my Henry days, the way I used to do things as Henry, Henry used to do things um, in a very systematic manner. He used to plan things, he used to research, plan, and then execute, right? Right. Um, so, yeah. So, for example, if Henry were doing closet dressing, um, he, he might look at the clock and go, Oh, um, there's a total of three and a half hours um, that I could spend um, closet dressing. Out of the three and a half hours, I could probably um, leave an hour and a half for it actual enjoying the experience um, and I could spend the first 30 minutes in full body shaving, second 30 minutes in um, putting on makeup, third 30 minutes in putting on the out outfit and and the 30 minute extra could be used as wiggle room. Yeah. Um, ironically when he was closet dressing he wasn't planning on leaving much wiggle room for Mr. Wiggle. For um, for understandable reasons, the story. So the story, operation. What was the operation again? Incognito. Yes, operation incognito. So this was during uh, my Henry days, in the year two thousand and thirteen, plus or minus a couple of years. Um, it was on a Sunday evening, um, the next day, Monday, um, it being a work day at the time. Henry had about three and a half hours to do his closet dressing session. So um, he did that rather systematically, and it was a very enjoyable closet dressing session. So um, afterwards, about 10 30 p.m he was feeling sleepy and so um, he figured he'd call it a night and he uh, slipped out of his closet dressing attire and uh, slipped into his um you know uh, comfy pjs yeah. 
But thing was, next morning he woke up, he had forgotten to set the alarm clock and he was doing field service at the time, so he was traveling to his customers. So that day he was uh, scheduled to visit one of his customers and he was like, oh no, um, yeah. Um, and he went into the, the restroom, brushed his teeth really, really quick, and it just like, like took off the PJs and then slipped on his work attire. And then he hurried to the customer. Well, the customer was in an office setting, so when he entered the customer, uh, customer's building at the reception desk. The staff there was greeting him in a strange and curious way. So Henry was like, oh okay, uh, being an alpha guy and stuff. He was like, maybe they're admiring at my handsomeness. Oh, so that little bubble it didn't last very long because uh, one of the staff there said to Henry, nice eyelashes. That's when Henry knew exactly why um, they were greeting him in such a manner. Henry turned and looked at one of the mirrors on one of the walls in the room. And sure enough, he had forgotten to remove his makeup. So. Um, he was at his customer location in his full-on uh, makeup. Of course, by then his beard had you know, grown back and he was like, ah! So, yep. So that's Operation Incognito. He was, he was supposed to like, like clean up the makeup so that his secret would be safe. But yeah, so that's, um, that's Operation Incognito, yep. So the second story is Operation Hidden Wiggles, yep. And if you're thinking uh, the story has something to do with Mr. Wiggles being tucked, you are partially correct, yep. So here's the story. So in 2015, Henry was realizing that he couldn't really function without Mr. Wiggles being tucked. So um, at work, uh, he, he was working on big heavy machinery at the time and his alarms, like warning alarms were going off, you know. Um, at work, when Mr. Wiggles was not tucked. So um, Henry was like, all right, Maybe he should consider tucking Mr. Wiggles um, at work. And, but then the kind of pants that he was wearing at work, which were worker, um, heavy worker jeans, um, it was a little bit difficult for Henry to, to tuck Mr. Wiggles. That's because the heavy worker jeans that Henry was wearing at the time had extra room for the manly belt because they were like guy cut, right? Guy cut jeans. And it was okay, you know, if Henry wasn't needing to tuck because Mr. Wiggles was quite huge back then at the time. And so, yeah, but when Henry tried tucking Mr. Wiggles under those jeans, the he was finding that the extra room for the belt, you know, on those on, on those jeans, were not holding their uh, their shape. Uh, they were very easily getting buckled inwards, and so Henry was like, "All right, uh, maybe he needed something to fill in the the space when he 
or when he wears the jeans with Mr. Wiggles being tucked. So Henry kind of rummaged around the um, his apartment and he found a piece of a squishy foam and so he kind of shaped the foam, kind of stitched it, cut it, stitched it to um, to to a little penis shaped uh, contraption and he figured you know, he could probably mount it on the converted panties that he was wearing. Converted panties, if you're feeling curious, there's a video I recorded previously posted on this channel uh, called Panties and Pets. I'll link in the description. Yep. You could watch that video. That video talks about converted panties. Yep. So he mounted the little foam penis on the converted panties using like double sided tape. And the foam was light enough that it was able to hold his foam on the panties. And then he put on a pair of like guy briefs on top for added security. And he was like, wow, smart. He was really feeling quite proud of himself. Um, for finding out a way around it because that way um, with Mr. Wiggles being tucked now that's that was satisfying Henry's needs personal needs and then the foam little penis was satisfying the outside appearance um, so Henry was like cool he tried going to a nearby store like that and the, the little setup function without Hitch. So Henry was like, cool. So the next day, um, Henry did that little setup and he went to work that way. Well, it was fine the whole day, except at the end of the day, he was talking to his co worker in the parking lot and suddenly he felt something like come out of one of the legs of his work jeans. And then he saw something yellow, like something yellow had come up. The sponge of the little fake penis was yellow. And he looked down and his coworker looked down and the, it was Henry's little fake penis on the ground next to Henry's shoes. So um, his coworker was like, what is that? And then Henry, feeling insecure, went. I have never seen this thing ever in my entire life. <laughs> and so that's Operation Hidden Wiggles. Yeah. Okay, so the third short story is Operation Cosset Review. If you're thinking it has something to do with Henry trying to come out of the closet, you are correct. So, it was in, yeah, 2015 as well. That was a fascinating year for Henry because earlier that year in January, Henry had come out to one of his neighbors at the time, but didn't have the courage to actually come out and, you know, be his like true gender in public. So he went back into the closet. But one evening, uh, this was after Operation Hidden Wiggles, Henry was like, Okay, um, how hard could it possibly be to just dress up as his true gender and just go outside and just, just enjoy being himself and his true gender, right? Mm. So one evening, um, in 2015, Henry did nice, clean, like extra clean shaving. He waxed his body hair, so it's like, it's like extra, extra smooth, you know? 
and he could be extra smooth and hairless for a few days um, beyond like three four hours and so Henry was like all right nice and prepped nice and smooth and sexy he put on his little silicone bra um, that he had bought online um, and he rolled a pair of socks Success. this is a short sock but the pair of socks that he was rolling um, they were um, longer socks so um, they were like maybe about this long you know from here to here yeah so um, by rolling the socks like so it's really cool because it kind of like the center kind of looks like a little like a little little nipple in the middle and the socks that Henry was rolling um, they were a lot longer so he, Henry was able to get a much bigger roll um, and Henry used um, each of the rolls and um, each of the sides of the, the bra as as um, as a filler. So yeah, so that plus the converted panties, he was able to tuck Mr. Wiggles nice and comfortably. Uh, he didn't have to wor worry about the fake penis because he was going on as a, as a woman. And so um, yeah, he put on his little closet dressing little short skirt. He, that short skirt, I probably wouldn't even consider wearing it today because in my opinion from today's perspective, as a fully transitioned woman, um, that little short skirt was borderlining a nighty, so it wasn't really appropriate for wearing like in public to begin with. But that was the only short dress that Henry had at, at the time. So Henry put that on, Henry put on his little pair of high heels, and Henry was like, all right, um, let's do this. So he went to his front door and he figured he could, it would be easier for him to kind of blend in, in like, um, in like a downtown environment, right? A busy city environment. So uh, at nighttime, so it was about 10 o'clock on a Saturday and 10 o'clock on a Saturday back then where Henry was residing at the time. On Saturdays, um, cities were like downtown area were packed with like restaurant goers and stuff. So yeah, so um, Henry went to his front door of his apartment and opened the inner door. He had two two layers of doors. Outer was a was a security screen door, and then inner was a, a wooden door. So he opened his wooden door, and he looked and checked to see if the coast was clear, because he wasn't feeling quite sure that he was ready to come out to the rest of his neighbors there at the time, and so he was like. Okay, course is clear. Let's do it. And then he tried to open the security screen door. And that's when he realized that he was having um, an extreme case of cold feet. Like his feet were literally feeling cold and they weren't moving to get him to step outside of the door and Henry was finding himself fighting with himself like come on let's get outside the door but then the rest of his body was like no I don't want to go out in this way I mean I don't want to go out um, like dressed like this so yeah so that's Operation Closet Debut um, yep, it 
Yeah, so Henry uh, closed the door and decided to just enjoy his, um, you know, closet dressing session in the privacy of his apartment that night. Yep. The next short story is called Operation Highway Closet. Yep. So if you're wondering, um, this is a story about Henry's another attempt to come out of the closet. You are correct. So Henry was visiting Vegas at the time and at about half an hour past midnight, Henry figured it was time for him to return home to his apartment in the Los Angeles area. So um, the trip was about like, mm, about a five hour long trip. And so um, then he was like, all right, a five hour long trip. Um, and then the next day was his day off. So he could just sleep in, you know, until noon or whatever. And that was, that was Henry's little plan at the time. So Henry packed his belongings, put them in the car, and was driving back home. About a few minutes into the trip, about like 30 minutes into the trip, Henry figured, okay, the, it's nighttime, and what if he just change into his closet dressing outfit and just drive in his closet dressing outfit home. It's a reasonable plan, right? Right. So um, while he was driving, Henry tried to look for a little, a little isolated, like a, like a parking lot somewhere that he could spot, and he found an isolated parking parking lot somewhere and so he pulled into the parking lot uh, he changed into his little closet dressing attire he put on his makeup and everything lipstick you know, eyelashes and stuff and he's like wow this is cool so he was like all right time to drive back home so um, he continued his journey back home to the LA area. So Henry was feeling quite proud and accomplished that he was able to dress in his true gender and drive his car um, back home um, that night at the time. What he was forgetting was a couple of things. The windows on his car were not tinted at all. And two was sunrise. Sun was rising um, that, that morning at about 5.30 a.m. and Henry was arriving home at about 5.30 a.m. So, yeah, so, Henry was feeling happy and in the midst of his excitement and enjoyment and uh, feeling like accomplished, he had totally forgotten to kind of squeeze in a little pit stop on the way to change back into guy clothing. And so sometime before the sun was rising, Henry was driving home and and then suddenly when he started entering the los angeles area he was like wow such a pretty sunrise and then it finally dawned on him yes that's quite a coincidence right um, it dawned on him at dawn 
so Henry was like, oh shoot. Faucet was in the fire, sun's rising, windows are not tinted. Uh, he's about to arrive home at sunrise. So, yeah. In full debut. So, the apartment where Henry was residing at the, at the time was a small complex of 14 units. And it just so happened that um, the tenants there, um, the majority of the tenants there were very, uh, very warm and fuzzy and very close to each other. So it was a nice, safe, warm and fuzzy neighborhood uh, that was there at the time. But the thing was, Henry hadn't come out to all the neighbors. He had only come out to just one of the neighbors. And so Henry was realizing the predicament that he was in. And on the highway, he was still fine. He just had to keep a straight face and a continuous journey to, to, towards um, his apartment. But then when he turned into his residential neighborhood, the sun was really like, it was illuminating now. And so Henry was like, oh shoot. All right, what to do, what to do? And then he found the street that he was was in, it was like a block away from the street that his apartment was in. But the difference between his apartment street and that street was that street had lots of big shady trees. And although the sun was rising, the angle of the sunrise and the big shady trees and stuff, there was still a lot of like dark shady spots on that street. But the big shady trees uh, the sun was rising, but the angle wasn't like at a point where the the sunlight was coming through the trees or anything. The shade, the shade from the trees, were still keeping the the street kind of like shaded and kind of dark at the time. So Henry took advantage of the opportunity and quickly parked his car there looked around and coast was clear. He quickly slipped into his guy attire and then he drove back to his apartment. He still had makeup on, but that was hardly noticeable if he acted calmly, got to his apartment after he changed back into his guy attire. And then he parked his car in the parking lot. He kind of made sure the coast was clear and the, the, coast, the coast was clear and he switched off the car, opened the car door, aimed himself for his apartment door and he quickly went into his apartment and shut the door of his apartment and he was like Mission successful, yep. So in his case, operation successful. And that's Operation Highway Closet. Okay, so the next short story is Operation Diddy's Room. Yep. So this was in 2018, um, Henry's second time coming out and a successful coming out this time. This was at Henry's uh, next apartment, uh, the apartment after the apartment in 2015. Henry had come out to his neighbor at that apartment in 2018, and the neighbor was quite delighted that Henry had come out to her and she was like, okay, let's, um, let's do this. And she, well, there's more on that story in my next video, Henry's coming out story. That day, 
she figured, you know, uh, she and Henry should go to a nice public place with Henry wearing his first bra during the visit to one of the places there uh, that she and Henry were visiting that that day. Uh, she was like, restroom time. And she took Henry into the ladies room. And Henry was like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah, you've come out and you're a woman. So you're using a you, you, you're using a ladies' room. And that was a frightening experience. And Henry was like, oh shoot, everything about him, he wasn't wearing a wig, he wasn't wearing any makeup. He was in a guy attire, just wearing a bra. And Henry didn't want to cause any trouble. And Henry didn't want to get into any trouble. But Henry was like, okay, fine, you know, um, he's, he's just come out and he wanted to transition so um, he wasn't like he was faking things or anything so um, it was like okay fine but the thing was although the restroom was completely empty with like three stalls in there it was a frightening experience henry just went well prepped this flat toilet seat you know um so that he could go in a proper ladylike way. Henry just went, but the whole time he was like hoping that nobody would come in uh, the restroom and uh, while he was using it. And luckily nobody did. And then uh, when he was done, he washed his hands and dried his hands and stuff. And then he stepped out of the restroom and he was like, okay. I, I have used up all my battery in this one shot experience that I'm not completely drained out and no more energy to come out anymore. So he removed his bra and he's like, okay, uh, switching back to putting on guy appearance, right? right. And he switched back to his guy appearance mode for the rest of the day, that day. Yeah. And that's Operation Ladies' Room. So the next uh, short story is Operation Police Emergency. This was in 2019. By then, Henry had started to refer to himself as Hannah and as a she, her, right? right? I guess I could say this was during Hannah's early days of transitioning. Hannah, well, if that's Hannah and this is Hannah, then I guess I could just talk in the first person. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, during my early days of my transitioning into Hannah, in 2019, I still had Mr. Wiggles at the time. And he was still quite huge. I was at one of my customer locations because I was already out of the closet, like fully out of the closet. I was in a women's attire, including my uniform top that I was wearing. So. Women's polo shirts, well, there, there wouldn't be shirts anymore. There would, there would be more like polo blouses. Yeah. So I was wearing my women's polo blouse, um, uniform thingy, a top thingy at the time, and I was in my uh, sexy, uh, womanly, uh, skin hugging pants, and Mr. Wiggles was tucked using my converted panties. Yep. Everything was going quite well that day until... Well, I was working with like, big, heavy industrial printers at the time. Until there was a point where I needed to kind of squat down. And when I did, suddenly Mr. Wiggles uh, woke up 
and he was like, I'm breaking out of these panties. And so um, the converted panties, they were like, I had constructed them in a way that the two halves in front, they were joined, they were joined using um, a couple of rows of stitching. And so when Mr. Wiggles decided to break out of the panties, the first row of stitching didn't really hold and it just went boop, 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 and it just snapped apart. And it was like, remember that scene from Jurassic Park, the, the very first Jurassic Park um, movie where the T-Rex, you know, decided to come out, you know, um, break the fence and come out from behind the fence while well, the fence kind of snapped, you know, snap, snap. It was kind of like that. So, yeah, well, I engineered the panties, so I knew exactly what was going on and I knew exactly what was about to happen if I didn't deploy my emergency rescue procedure yep, at the time. So, um, well, what was about to happen if I were to let it continue, like let the panties continue to break apart, was out would come Mr. Wiggles. And then Mr. Wiggles would pop out. He was pretty huge at the time. And without the panties uh, tucking Mr. Wiggles, Mr. Wiggles would be easily apparent through the the pants that I was wearing and yeah so that was about to happen if I didn't intervene with my emergency rescue procedure thingy so um, I was like all right I need to first stand up really really quick so I stood up and the um, the, the breaking apart of the panties kind of stabilized and the remaining row of st stitching was able to hold the panties. So I got a piece of just um, tape, like two inch, you know, uh, packing tape and a little short piece. And I went to the restroom and I kind of like applied the tape on the on the converted panties so that it could act like a second row of stitching. And I was able to keep the panties from fully um, falling apart, basically, fully opening up. And that was a successful rescue effort. Yep. So that's Operation Panties Emergency. Yeah. The next short story is Operation Sexy Mask. Yep. So this was back in my Henry days. The year was 2013, plus or minus a couple of years. And Henry was still closet dressing at the time. But one evening, while he was closet dressing, well, he he had gathered basic knowledge about uh, putting on makeup and stuff. For example, you know, to put on makeup, you know, the the base layer being the moisturizer, face cream, and then the next layer, the makeup, the concealer layer, and powder layer and stuff like that um, and then to remove the makeup he had makeup remover the thing was uh, that evening and the next morning was uh, a work day um, that evening Henry was closet dressing and then when it came time to remove his makeup he realized that he was out of makeup remover. So he was like, no. So he went online and kind of tried to Google things like, um, and stuff. 
And then he discovered that in the absence of makeup remover, he could use plain old hand lotion. Yep, that's right, hand lotion. So he went to his dependable bottle of hand lotion and then he kind of pumped a few squirts and rubbed the lotion all over his face. And yep, he was able to wipe off the makeup with his hand lotion. Yes. So that's Operation Sexy Mask. Yep. So last but not least is a short story called Operation Phone Greeting. Yep. Operation Phone Greeting. Um, this was during my early henna days in 2019. I had already fully come out of the closet. Uh, I was already conducting myself as henna. It was time to change my phone reading from Henry's phone reading into Hannah's phone reading. Right, right. Um, but the thing was, when I tried to change into Hannah's phone reading, I thought I was recording in Hannah's voice. But then when I was playing back the phone reading, it was sounding in Henry's voice. So I was like, how, why, right? So I was using my little um, cassette voice recorder to practice um, my, um, <clears throat> my voice at the time. And from my cassette voice recorder, I was sounding fine. I was sounding um, henna. But then, you know, playing back from my phone, I was sounding Henry. So I was like, I was feeling quite baffled about it. And so I tried recording the phone greeting while I was recording the same greeting from my little cassette voice recorder. And you know what? My cassette voice recorder played back as Hannah and my phone played back as Henry. It was frustrating at first because I couldn't get my greeting to sound Henna. It was Sonny Henry. Yeah. My strategy at the time was I did some breathing and I tried to breathe really deep and I tried to exhale like as much air as I could while trying to keep the, the pitch up really, really high. Essentially screaming, right, into the phone. Uh, during the recording. And when I played back that recording, my voice came out as Hannah's voice. So I was like, okay, mission successful. <sighs> now I need to, to drink something <laughs> to soothe my throat. Yep. Good news was after about, uh, a couple of years into HRT, one day I was leaving a phone message and I was playing back the phone message. The message sounded just henna, 100% in henna voice. So I was like, wow, the message just played back in 100% henna voice. That's amazing. Yep. Those of you who are beginning transitioning and who are struggling with like voice changes and stuff at this time my suggestion is to get a conventional cassette based voice recorder and practice using that and that's because the um it's an unaltered transient waves right right so um, it's a little bit easier to hear the how the voice actually sounds like instead of like trying to record it into a digital uh, device and uh, feeling frustrated and stuff because there's a lot of digital converting that's going on in there and so the voice might not play back the way it actually sounds like in real life uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below i'd be curious to know and yeah Letters. Hello, you have reached.
bananas, boys, male. Who knows not available to answer your call at this time. So if you could please leave your name, your telephone number, and a brief reason why you're calling. This way, Hannah could return your phone call. Thanks. Bye.